Right, remember this. It's a cotton reel tank or a cotton reel tractor and my dad showed me how to make one. And this was back in the day when the most fun you ever got was playing with a stick. So these things were great. And I made one. And it had a problem. It kept sticking. My dad told me to rub the end of it with some candle wax or some grease. And sure enough, that improved it. But it still kept sticking. And because the problem is the power source, which is the rubber band, you wind up and that clamps everything down. So the more windings you put in it, the more it's clamped and the harder it is, in fact, to get going. Now that is an issue that you see lots of times in the machine, which is usually solved by something like this. It's a thrust bearing. It's meant to take the forces that act directly on those plates. And because there's a whole bunch of ball bearings in there, those forces don't clamp anything. So I thought I would revisit this old toy using a thrust bearing. So to do that, I went to Tinkercad and I drew up this. The heart of it is this cream-shaped barrel with the gear on it and the two pegs sticking out at the end. That takes place of the cotton reel. The other bits help transmit the power. But it might be better if we just print that off and build it. Okay, there's the bits printed out. And in addition is this thing. It's a thrust bearing. It's made of three separate parts, two metal rings and then a ring of ball bearings. And it takes the weight that way. This particular one is 11 millimetres deep, 42 millimetres to the outside diameter, and the inside diameter is 25 millimetres. First of all, you take this gear with the pegs on it, and one of these rings presses in the slot on the top of the gear so that it looks like that. Then the ball bearing rest goes on, and then the other ring goes on like that. So it looks like that when it's put together. On the frame, it slots in only on one side, right there, like that, and it should be free to, nice and free to turn. This other gear slots in on the frame right there, where it's got the little bits that it'll slot into, so it slots in right there, and then we have four little pieces to hold the whole thing together. We've got these two horseshoes that slot in there to hold that, and this horseshoe with an indentation slots in there to hold that, and then we have these two horseshoes, we've got either side of the other gear like that, and you just glue them in place. Once they're glued in place, it should still be nice and free to spin. And this piece goes on here and gets glued to the frame. So that's held fixed to the frame with that bar in a cross section like that. And just glue that on, making sure again, everything's nice and free to spin when it's fixed. So with this plate, take a thick rubber band about half a millimeter, half a centimeter across, feed it through so it's held by that bar. So it's like that, like sewing a button, we've got two edges there, and feed those edges through there till they come out at the bar of the other side. It's like that. Then push this one onto those two locating pegs. Pull the rubber band through and tie a knot right there. Like that. Then a spot of super glue and trim those edges off will hold that in place. So it's like that. And then take the cap and press the cap on top. Now don't glue it on, just press it in place because you might want to take that off if that band breaks. And in the cap there's two little leverage holes so you can do exactly that. And on the other side, press that turn handle onto those locating lugs. Again, don't glue it on because you might want to have to take that off. So to use it, rest your thumb on here, wind it up with the handle, and when you think you've got enough winds in there, just let it go. <laughs> okay, I thought that was pretty neat, and it seems to work quite well as an actual motor, so I'm probably going to build some of the projects using this as a motor, but I thought I would do the motor by itself, in case anybody wanted to build their own projects and try out the rubber band motor and see how it works for them. But there we go. I shall put these files onto Thingiverse, of course, and the link will be in the description. And we'll probably do a couple of projects with this just to see what it could be used for. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like the motor. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.